No, so um, just to go back on what you said, you um, obviously get you get supplied mostly from local fishermen, but you also mentioned Norway. So what's yeah, so your so okay, so you, you've got to differentiate the difference between wild and farm first yeah. of all. Okay, um, explain that to us. Big difference, big difference. So. <laughs> So wild fish is, you don't know what you're getting, you're going out in a boat, um, it's random, you don't know what you're going to catch, okay. and you don't know how much it's going to be. When you like, you, go out and, to and sea with your You go out to and sea, and those, yeah. that, that's fishermen, they're, they're going out, they're sort of hunting for fish, if you like, and, they're, and there's a few different ways to catch them, three, different, three or four different ways of catching fish, you know, line core, or trawling, or mm -hmm. fixed net, um, or gathering, basically, those are like a sardines with a, with a, with a kind of purse net. Um, so they'll be fishing on those methods, going out to sea, and targeting certain species. Um, so that's your that's your wild fish. Okay. okay so and, and the best of that is coming in down in Cornwall, small boats, um, artisan methods of fishing. Um, you know, really maybe just two people on the boat. Um, if you're going for something like hake, you do need a bigger boat. Um, but still, um, it's you know they're really using sustainable methods there, particularly the hake boats, that's, that's all M MSC approved, um, marine, um, I, I get mixed up, there's Marine Conservation Society, Marine Stewardship Council is, is, is the ones who covered the hake, there's, there's two different organisations with similar names, but um, anyway, so, so that's wild fish yeah. that, that you're buying down there. And then what's so, so then, you, then, then you've got farm fish, okay, so farm fish can be farmed in various different places um, depending on climate, etc. Mm -hmm. So salmon is, is, is always done up in yeah. Scotland or Norway, um, but things like sea bass and bream, they're done out in, in, in Greece or Turkey. Um, in Norway they do halibut and turbot. Um, farmed. Farmed, this yeah. is all farmed okay. now, I'm talking all farm fish now. Um, so we can buy a turbot down in Cornwall that's wild, um, but it could, A, it might not be there at all, we might not get one, um, B, the price, because everything's sold on auction down on the wild fish, that could escalate up to an outrageous price mm -hmm. that's non-economical for a chef to buy it, um, right. because they're kind of constantly working back, backwards on working on multiples of markup, so if they, if they can't sell a turbot for more than a turbot dish for say for example more than 35 pounds they pretty much can't buy that for more than seven or eight in order for it to work with their margins you see so wild fish only something like a wild turbot when it's expensive would only work for a real top end place or somewhere where price wasn't an, an, an object at right. all like you know sultan or something or a um a vip kind of thing yeah cause so when well because when you think about sustainable fishing you or where to get sustainable fish from we tend to think oh automatically wild caught but um, and there's an association of farmed fish as being not sustainable not ethical, um, but is that true not necessarily um, you can all you can always <coughs> excuse me you can always highlight um, and you can always find unsustainable methods of any type of fishing right. actually so so, for example, the, the kind of fish that we avoid down in Cornwall, the wild fish that we avoid is being trawled. Um, it's where they've got a great big sort of bar that goes along the bottom of the ocean, um, and it drags up, um, and they catch whatever down oh, there. Oh, and that and it catches everything. Catches so, everything, okay. and it also damages the seabed. Right. So, so that's not sustainable. So, you, you, and if you compared that to say a really well-run fish farm, um, right. you could definitely say the fish farm was going to be more sustainable than that. So, so you can't you can't just say wild is sustainable and farmed isn't. Yeah. It's, it's it's not it's, black and white. It's not black yeah. and white. So, so, um, so when when you come to farm fishing, um, it depends what methods they use. Mm. There, there's a there's a certification sort of body called Global GAP, which um, which is quite strict audit that. Um, so if if you want to call yourself responsibly farmed, so we, we we pride ourselves on you know responsible sourcing. So our wild fish is is sustainable or as sustainable as it could possibly be, and the farm fish that we buy is from um, it's been signed off as being responsibly farmed. So that will mean um, usually either no or either no antibiotics or, or, or extremely low level of antibiotics. It will be um, natural feeds. Um, it would be about density per square meter in a cage. So, right, for example, yeah. if this was a salmon cage, this this room, um, there, there could be salmon. Uh, a less sustainable salmon farm, if you like, a less responsible salmon farm might have 10 fish per square meter 
Whereas if you're buying, you know, you could find another one that's got three per square meter, which just means that A, it's better at animal welfare, um, but also the end product would be better too because the fish are more athletic. It's a bit like you wouldn't want battery, it's like battery chickens. It, there's an equivalent of that of, so you can have a, more of a free range farm. It, it, yeah, if you, you, you So you could, you could associate, you, you could compare it um, to that, that some farming, can be irresponsible or not sustainable but then if you choose carefully um, where you're buying from yeah. um, which we do um, then you know you're buying the best of what of, of what you can get um, so yeah I mean we, we deal with about we deal with about five or six farms directly including Bybury Trout Farm that's very good a, a, a place down in Hampshire Chalk Stream um, where it's in fast flowing waters and they don't they only use natural feed uh, we deal with a salmon farm in Scotland. When you Duarte. say natural feed, by the way, that's like no dyes and no... Yes, no dyes. Um, now, the, the feed itself can be a controversial thing sometimes in fish farming because it's like, if it contains fish, then they're worried about, well, did that... Cannibalism. Well, was, well no, 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 because fish eat fish. Salmon, salmon right. eats, eat, eat fish, not cannibal, hunters, actually. Mm. Cannibal would be they eat salmon. I had, I had pet fish when I was younger, and it's true, some of them ate each other, so. Yeah, some of them <laughs> eat, eat each other, but um, the, the the fact is that, that sometimes they're using certain types of fish for um, for feed that that species might not be sustainable, so that's what you've got to be careful of. Um, ah, okay. I can't completely solve the whole sustainability argument because there's lots of opinions that are knocking about. But we we, we follow the um, the Marine Conservation Society guide, and, and they've got a kind of red list, and we make sure that we never sell anything that's on that red list um, mm -hmm. or above a number three in sustainability. Right. One is is the best. Four and five is bad. Um, Can you so name a few things that are on the red list, just so we know? Um, yeah, well, they've they've got um, so for example, skate. Um, so we sell something here which is actually ray, but a, a, a true skate is endangered okay. um, and, and shouldn't be traded or uh, brought, brought in yeah. well, or even sold on the fish market. Um, bluefin tuna as well, um, you've no got to have way, a special really? life. Okay. So yellowfin's fine and, and depending on where it's from. But again, it's all about sustainability, isn't it's sometimes not just about a species, it's about the area or the, the way that it's caught in that area. And, and so, for example, you could have a Dover sole on the red list if it's from the east side of England because A, they might be short over there or the way that they're catching them there isn't sustainable. So they'll put that on the red list, but then they'll say, um, if you're buying a Dover sole, for example, in the Celtic Sea Irish box, caught using these methods, which is fixed net or otter trawl, for example, then that's okay and you're number two there. What's so, a fixed net? Um, a fixed net is where you um, where you set out a net, um, and then you kind of wait for the almost wait for the tide to go through. Oh, it, to it, like it's a fixed net. So, catching fish, you're either baiting a hook, or you're kind of pulling something, or you're setting out a net, or you're encircling them. That's the only kind of ways that you can catch a fish, basically. Um, so, so line caught is normally really good, but then the long line sometimes isn't because there's there's been a history of sort of um, you know dolphins and, and and that kind of thing so we avoid long line yeah. tuna we buy hand line and pole court tuna um, which again is the most sustainable it's, it's one of a few accounts actually our just our tuna actually um, it's quite an important mm -hmm. product to um, but then you know the latest uh, word is that tuna from the Indian Ocean potentially might be unsustainable however it's caught but that's just a kind of it's under research so there's they're constant there's people constantly right. researching um, we have to kind of try and follow the guidance and common sense um, right. and stay up by, to date. by the most by the most responsible as, as we can